Hello, good day, and welcome back to NATS. In this video, I want to show you two simpler ways of running your NATS cluster. One of them is we're going to use a command line tool called Gorman. This, was, this is the Go implementation of another tool called Foreman. You're going to see what it's about a little bit about it, so don't worry. And then I'm going to transition to showing you how to run a NATS cluster using Docker. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So here I'm on my command line. And just so you know, what I'm doing is running um, the watch command NAT server ls as we were doing before. But this time I'm using the minus context argument to say I want to use the local cluster. That way I don't have to have the local cluster as the selected one. I can use any cluster. And just to jog your memory, Let's do NATS context edit local cluster so you can see what's in there. And the URL for the three clusters I'm going to be running, remember they're going to be running on port 4222, 4223, 4224. And admin and password, and that's from my system account, um, the user from my system account. Okay, so that's fine. And that's waiting there to connect. What's in this directory? In this directory, I have a subdirectory called cluster example 01 and if i go into 01 directory all i have are the three configuration files that we used the last time if i were to fire up our cluster just as i did the last time notice or explicitly running um, nat server and i have to run each one okay if i want to kill one i do control c there to kill it okay so all that still works what i'm saying is that there's an easy way of doing this and so Let's clear this and let's do, do go install github.com and mat n and we'll say gourmand at latex. Once we hit enter and run this command, it's going to install gourmand. Now I already have gourmand installed, so my return quickly. But what does gourmand give you? Well, we'll see that if you type gourmand and enter, you see you can do gourmand check um, to show entries in your prop file. You can check the um, do help, you can do export, you can do run commands, so on and so on, and start process. All right, so let me just jump in and show you how you would create a um, prop file. So I'm going to stop our servers here, and I'll go to our editor. And in this directory, I'm going to create a file called proc file. And this file is very easy. It's just the commands that you would normally run preceded by the name of the service that or the process you want to run. So we have NATS1, and the command we want to run is NATS server with the configuration file NATS server one that's cof That's it. And so we just do this three times. So now this is all that we need. So if I go back here now, I can easily do Gorman and I can do start. And now you can see it starts the same three services as before. So now I don't need to run them in separate windows. So I can sort of just get rid of this right now. I can say Gorman. And remember, if you type ls, you can see the help here. So you can do check. You can do, I tell you the those three services are running. You can do run and you can do stop, let's say, NATS3 and just stop NATS3. You can stop NATS2, and that's all that happens there. I can start things back by doing that. And I can do that, start three. So you can see that this is a nice and easy way of sort of being able to manage. You can see all the log messages for those three services sort of printed out on the screen, and it can tell you which messages from which service. So this is something really nice to have in case you have multiple commands you want to run. And so it's easy to stop everything. So you can say go man run and you can say stop all. And then it shuts down everything. And there you go. All right. Now, whether you, this is, again, you don't have to use it. It's just a little nice thing to know. You can also use environmental files also, but I'm not going to get into that. The next thing I want to show you is how to do... Um, fully connected or mesh um, seed servers, which means we have more than one seed servers, the three of our seed servers, 
um, are connected. Okay, so our clients can therefore connect to any one of the seed server. And so that is pretty easy. We go up here, we're gonna copy cluster one directory, we're gonna paste it, we're gonna call it cluster two, example two, and let's close these files, close this file. So what do I wanna do in my cluster two directory? Well, I, like I said, I wanna do a fully connect, I wanna do three seed servers. So now remember, I can have multiple server, I can have a cluster with many servers and all of them don't need to be seed server. We just saw that we had a cluster with three server and only one was seed. Now we're gonna have a cluster with three servers and all three of them are gonna be seed servers. But you can create a cluster with 10 servers and three of them are seed servers. I just wanna show you how that would work. So here we just say, um, one of the routes is to 62.22, which is that first server. The next one is 62.23 and the last one is 62.24. With this configure on the first server, I just put that in the configuration for all the other servers. There we go. And now, if I go back now to my cluster zero two directory, create it, and I say Gorman start, you'll see it starts up and nothing looks any different than what we had before. The only difference now is that we have um, three seed servers. And so this is going to work the same way, but now we have like a fully meshed um, set of C servers. So let me show you how to set this up to use Docker. In the previous video, I showed how you can use the NAT CLI from a Docker container. And that is by using the NATS box um, Docker image. There's also a NAT server that you can run um, from Docker, just in case you don't want to install the NAT server on your machine. So let's pull that NAT image for the server, and then I'll show you how you can run NAT server um, from a, a Docker container. So we're going to do Docker pull NAT colon latest. Um, now I've done this already, so uh, mine should be up to date. So once you have that now, now you can say Docker run and you can say minus minus rm if I want to remove it, and I can say nats. And if I do this and I just run it, you'll see that it starts up a nats server for me, and it's listening on port 4222 by default already for client connection. It's also listening on port 6222 for um, routing information. And it calls the cluster my name. So there is some configuration that already comes with nats that is setting this up. So since we haven't mapped the port in the container to our local machine, we can't connect it, right? And we can easily do that by going back up here and doing minus P to map the port 4222 on our local machine to 4222 inside of the NAS cluster. And if we did that, we'll see as how, well, you know, or we're going to try to connect. Of course, we can connect because we don't know for the server what um, the username and password for the system account is. With that said, remember, we can always override the configuration file. So I just wanted to show you that how you can at least um, start up NAT server from a container. So what we're going to do now is create a Docker Compose file that manages the life cycle of our Docker container and therefore allow us to create a cluster very easily. So now we need to copy our 02 to 03. So let's do that. So we don't want to use a prop file this time. So we're going to delete this and let's create a Docker compose file. In our Docker compose file, we're going to say service services and under services, we'll create one service called NATS1. We'll use the image NATS, which we pulled earlier. And for command, as we saw, if we didn't override the command, what would happen, it would use its default configuration, but we wanted to use the configuration we're gonna give it. So we're gonna use minus C and tell it to use a configuration file located at Etsy in nats-config.conf, that's within the container. So what we need to do is make sure that we now mount a volume, you know, the file that's in our local file system to the file that is expected in the container, which is what we specify um, in the command 
um, are overwrite. And so once we do that, now the only thing left is to um, say that uh, we want port 442 on our local machine to be mapped to port 442 within that container. So now let's test this configuration. So we're going to go into CD into a 03 example directory here. I will say Docker Compose, and we're going to say up. And if we did everything correctly, we should see, and we did, we have a server up and we can connect to it. So great. So if we want to do a cluster, we just have to duplicate this configuration. So let's duplicate this. And of course, we want this to be mapped to 4223 locally and then 4224 locally. In terms of creating a cluster, we need our routes to be correct. And if we look at our file here, it says that oh, it expects a route to the seed servers to be on that local host 23 and 24, but that's not correct. These are going to be on the host NAT1 and NAT2, NAT3. Remember, each Docker container is going to look like its own host. So this is the host name, this is, which is basically this name. This dot, Docker is going to give each container this name as its host name. So now these containers can find each other using this name. But of course, each one of them, since they're their own host, they can still use their local 4222 and you know 6222. So therefore, this is going to be the same. Notice just the host name that's different. And if we wanted to, we can still map, you know, to those um, host name by saying 6222 get maps to 6222, and then for this guy. You know, 6223 get maps to 6222. Remember, it, within the container, it's going to be the same. It's just externally, when I map it on my computer, I want it to be different. So 6222. So with this, we should now be able to not only bring up our cluster in Docker, have them connect to each other using the Docker network with these host name. But then because we map them with the same port externally, we should still be able to connect, all right? So let's shut this down. And what we can do is actually say down to clean up everything. And then we can say up to bring up the whole thing again. And once again, if this is correct, it should connect successfully. Now I see this is saying 127.0.1.6222. And there's something wrong because I don't see all three of my hosts come up. So let's see what's happening oh my configuration files so i need to copy this configuration to all my files so right now this was changed in this file i need to do the same thing here and of course i need to tell it oh you can do um your cluster import is 6222 and then i go here and then, yes your cluster import is 6222 and by the way um here you go. Uh, the other thing that I need to change is this port. I can see that oh, you're actually going to be using 6222 there, and 4222, sorry, and 4222 here. So now all the configurations are essentially the same. Let's take a look and see. So let me just close all these files for now. And then if I compare this file to this file, and then I say compare selected, we'll see that, sure, the name of the server is different, which we want, but the port doesn't have to be. And we can certainly remove the temp directory here because we don't, since they're on different hosts, we don't have to worry about that. And then everything else is the same, right? Except for the server name. So I can go to this one, do the same thing, remove the temp directory. And if I compare these two, I should see the same thing where the only difference is in the server name. Okay, so that's good. So let's close everything. And now let's go back to our Docker Compose here and then do down for everything to clean up and then do up. And this time, I'm yep, confident that all we're gonna have our cluster created and there it is. And if we were to stop, let's say 
we went to this directory, so we're talking about 03 this time. And we say Docker compose and we do stop. Let's say NATS2, for example. You can see that um, we stop that Docker container and it's fine. And we can say stop one, for example, and we can still connect to it. And we can say start, you know, one and start two. Okay. And so our cluster is back and healthy. So we've successfully pulled it off in Docker. All right. So hopefully that's helpful. And you enjoyed this video showing you how you can create cluster directly your computer using something like Gorman to simplify um, running multiple commands. So you don't have, mul to have multiple windows open or using Docker and a Docker compose file, which we have done before to create a cluster. And now it makes it super easy for you to scale your cluster because you can simply just come back to a Docker Compose file and add even more command or even with Gorman. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. And finally, before I go, in terms of supporting the channel, there are a number of ways in which you can support the channel, as you know, and a new addition is that I have a Tesla referral link and use the Tesla referral link if you're in the market for anything Tesla related, either EV or, you know, solar panel or anything from Tesla. Um, you can use my referral link and we both benefit by both of us getting some points. All right. Take care. Be safe. Have a great day. Bye.